All right, everybody, in this video, I'm going to explain how the substring method works in Java. Substring is a method that's used to extract a portion of a string. Strings have a built in method of substring. Within the substring method, you can list one of two indices. This method will create a new string based on the positioning of the indices, the start and the end. I can best demonstrate this with us creating an email slicer program. So what we'll do in this demonstration is create a string of email. Type in your own email. I don't want to give you guys my actual email because some of you guys are weird. No offense. My email will be bro123 at gmail.com. Our variable of email is a string. Strings have a built-in method of substring. We can create a new string from portions of the original string. Here's how. Let's say I would like the first six letters, but depending on your own email, it may be different. The substring method will return a new string. So let's create a new variable, the data type of string of username equals to create a substring. We will take the original string, use the substring method, then list one of two possible indexes or indices. The first index will be zero. At what position would we like this substring to end? I would like to end right before this at sign. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The second index is exclusive. So we're creating a new string of username by using the substring method of our original string of email. Then let's print it to test it. We will display our username. And now we have a new string. Mine is bro123, but depending on what you wrote for your email, it may be different. Now, I would like a new substring of every character after the at sign. This will be a variable named domain. What is the domain of our email? Again, we're taking our original string using the substring method, then list one of two possible indices. So again, let's count. This is index zero, because in programming, we tend to start with zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then we will display our domain. So my domain is gmail.com. Within your substring method, if you have a starting index, but you would like all the characters that come after all the way till the end, you don't necessarily need an ending index. We could just say seven. That would work too. Gmail.com. There's one issue with how we wrote this program. What if somebody has a different length of an email? There's a greater or lesser number of characters. So let's say I have a different email. This program doesn't work as intended. It's not flexible. So my domain is one at gmail.com. I could modify the indices of the substring method. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then the domain would be nine because I want everything after the at sign. And then my username, let's check that. So this would be my username, bro code one. To make this program more flexible, instead of manually entering the indices, we can determine what this number should be with another string method. We're going to use the index of method in place of a number. We're going to find the at character. Let's replace our second index with email, our string, dot, use the index of method. Then we will find the index of our at character. We're gonna replace this number with email dot index of and find the at sign. So now let's try printing our username. So here's my username. Then let's print the domain. Currently we have that at sign. The index of method returns a number which we're using as the index. It's returning the index of this at sign. I'm going to increase it by one so we get everything after the at sign. So plus one. And now the at sign is removed. Even better yet, let's accept some user input. 
we'll need a scanner. Import java.util.scanner. We'll create a scanner object. Scanner, scanner equals new scanner. Then we will need system.in. Then when we open a scanner, it is a good idea to close it when we're done with it. I sometimes forget. We'll create a prompt for a user to type in their email. Enter your email. I'll use print instead of print line. I'm going to declare my variables after our scanner. That's just how I like to arrange things. We'll declare our email, but not yet assign it. Same thing applies with our username and our domain. We've already declared these variables. We don't need to do that again. Instead of manually assigning our email, we're going to use our scanner to accept user input. Scanner.nextLine. Let's display our username and our domain. Okay, enter your email. I'll make up something. Bro123 at gmail.com. Here's my username and the domain. We can take this a step further too. We can check to see if our email is valid. We'll use some of the string methods we learned about in the last video. So after accepting our email, we're going to write an if statement. If our email contains the at character, our email is only valid if we have this at character. If it is, then we'll perform all this code. So let's cut it, then stick it within the if statement. Else we will do something else. Let's print emails must contain at. Let's type in an email that's not valid. I won't include the at sign. Emails must contain the at character. Let's try that again. Fake guy one at, maybe they're using Yahoo, yahoo.com. So my username would be fake guy one. The domain is yahoo.com. All right, everybody. So that is the substring method and how to create an email slicer program. The substring method is used to extract a portion of a string. You can list one of two possible indices within the substring method, a starting index and an ending index. We use the substring method on an email, then created two new substrings, one of username and the other of domain. And well, everybody, that is the substring method in Java.